Thanks so much for coming out to Food Loves Tech. I'm Julie from the Feed Feed, and I'm here with Linda all the way from Seattle, Salty Seattle. Let's give hey her guys. a big round of applause. Welcome. Um, welcome. I'm clapping for myself. How are they yeah. giving us an oh, offer? No. Welcome back to New York. We just Thank saw you. you here a couple weeks ago. I know, five times in the last month, so I think I should move here, hang out with all you lovely people all the time. Well, thanks so much. We're so excited you came back today. So as we mentioned, we're making rainbow farfalle. Yep. Um, Does anybody know what farfalle means? What does it mean? Butterflies. Butterflies, yes. So now does everybody know what the shape is, what farfalle are? They're the, the sometimes people in this godforsaken call them bow ties in this country. But yes, that's what we're making. So I think let's jump in. Absolutely. So what do we have here? You mentioned it before. We yep. have dough. And these have been dyed with natural vegetable ingredients. Exactly. All of the ingredients you see here and then over 25 different dough color recipes in my book are all made from vegetables, herbs, and superfoods. So let's just go. I'm going to quiz you first just so I'm not putting them totally on the spot. Okay. But what do you think the red is made from? Um, I think most people would say beets. Beets? Yep. Beets. Yep. Or but cabbage. But if you do, if you go with straight beets, it's going to be kind of more of a fuchsia color. Okay. So I actually put a little bit of harissa in it, which is oh, a North African yeah. spice base. Awesome. Bring it more into the realm of like red, red, red not pink red. And does the flavor come through? I'm sure people so will see that So this all is the awesome, time. and I hope you guys stay till the end of the demo because I do get that question all the time, and you guys get to actually debunk that myth. You will get to taste the farfalle and answer for yourselves whether you think the flavor comes through. Okay. Um, We'll give the spoiler alert answer. Uh, because the orange is made from harissa and it is a little bit spicy, this is one dough that I would say don't test it out on picky people or children okay. because it can have just a teeny bit of a kick to it. But right. by and large, the rest of the flavors really don't. It's, it's very nominal. So I tried to add enough of the color ingredient to get the health benefit, okay. but not so much of it that it's an overt taste of like, oh, I'm going to spit out my turmeric. Right. You know? Yep. Which um, is probably what you have in Which is yellow. Oh, I just gave it away. I gave it away. Dang it. Yes. Yes. That's that's uh, the yellow is turmeric root. Uh, I like to use the real root rather than the powder. Yeah. Uh, the real root just has that vibrant, bright yellow. Plus, it's um, the bioavailability availability of it is increased if you're using the root really? rather than and how do you powder. how do you work with it? And has everyone seen what turmeric looks like? It it's like it looks, it looks like, like your thumb. thumb. Yeah. It looks like your thumb. So and then you, you just use... slice it in half. Okay. <laughs> Not for real, not this. So how? let's talk about that for a second. How are you getting these colors infused into your pasta dough? So you've had beets, you've had harissa, you've had um, turmeric. People think that it's sorcery, and it's not sorcery at all. I literally just puree the color ingredient. So I cut a few thumbs of turmeric into quarter-inch pieces, put it in the blender, uh, add some eggs in, and puree that together, and that's how you achieve the color. So there's no rocket science here. And that here. goes right in. It's not like you're straining it off. All those vegetables are in this dough. Uh, if, uh, exactly, you don't yeah. strain it out. Unless you don't have a super high-powered blender and you're working with something really fibrous like yeah. kale or stinging nettle, okay. then sometimes I'll pass it through a strainer. I mean, most of it goes through, but you just not the little hairs. Okay. Um, so let's actually, let's start unwrapping some of these balls. Okay. You guys, I am... Completely happy for this to be an interactive demonstration. So if anybody does feel the need to come up here and touch my balls, you are welcome to do so. Um, it's always nice from a textural perspective if you've ever made pasta. People are like, oh, what should it feel like? What did I do wrong? Uh, and so, you know, getting a hold of this and like I'm actually being serious. I mean, I do want you to fondle my balls, but I'm being serious. It's nice to feel it and touch it and know what texture you're after. Um, and there's really no way to know that besides just to, to actually um, palpitate it. Also, let's talk for a second about this KitchenAid and um, this pasta attachment. It looks like a fancy, expensive piece of equipment that not all home cooks might be able to invest in. So in your book, do you have recipes where you actually just can roll it out by hand? Lots of them. There's an entire chapter devoted to pasta without tools, essentially, or with, with a tool like this, yes, basically, right. and this yeah. is all you need. Uh, there's a big gnocchi section uh, and all of those rolled and tube doughs. So um, as we're removing the dough, okay, do you, want will you to... just kind of take off, like, Chunks that are about the size of a, yeah, uh, 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 this. Actually, I can smell the. Beef. I can only come up with bad euphemisms, so like I'm. We're gonna keep this PG with just a couple of PG 13s thrown in. No bleeping allowed. Um, a couple weeks ago, I actually made a pasta with uh, Snooky, who is a person from the Jersey Shore. 
um, and the edit just came out on MTV yesterday, and I watched it. And you don't get any of the content because the entirety of the episode is just bleep. So we're going to try not to do that today. Okay. We're, we're being super good up here. Well, no one's giving me any wine yet. Is there wine down there? Actually, I think we have wine right next to our booth. Why did you tell me? <laughs> um, so we went over the green. Yes? No, we didn't. What's the green? Anyone? Anyone? You could use spinach, absolutely. You could use nettle, you could use kale, you could use chard. This particular color here comes from parsley because I like how it's like really, really vibrant. And parsley um, is a breath freshener, which is important, you know, when you slurp, when you do like that lady in the tramp thing with your yeah. pasta and then you slurp together and you kiss your lover at the end. Uh, so you just mentioned nettle. Are you guys familiar with stinging nettles? Have you ever heard of this? particular I guess it's a bush it's like a it's like sorry um, it's a what a bush <laughs> um, so you actually harvest it with gloves on because it has these little um, like stingers in the end that will get into your fingers or your hands and really sting for hours you're just like oh my god what is that you can't get it off so you you harvest them wearing gloves they have a lot of them they come out in the springtime um, the second you blanch it all of the oh, steam goes away, yeah. and it's very high in iron, like three times what spinach is, and it tastes delicious. And it tastes delicious. really good. And you really know, good. I actually learned that it's a, it, there's a recessive gene that exists in some people who are not, they don't get the sting. Oh. I met a guy who, like, didn't get the sting from stinging nettle at all. That's like, really Like, you could, like, touch that, which, yeah, I thought it was so crazy. Okay, let's put these out there, just in case you guys want to touch them. Okay, so we talked about green. Actually. We can oh, blue. Those. Did yes. you talk about blue? We didn't talk about blue. Blue is always a big question for people. Um, does anybody know or does anyone have a guess? Sarah. <laughs> I know you know. So blue comes from a flower that is native to Southeast Asia. If you go for cocktails a lot, it's a very popular cocktail ingredient right now. So I'm not in a room full of drunks. Um, <laughs> Blue comes from a flower called the butterfly pea flower. Uh, anybody ever seen it? It's it, really pretty. It, it's beautiful. The Latin name for butterfly pea flower is uh, Clitoria ternatea. It bears a passing resemblance to <laughs> something. Did you guys know that you were going to get all this along with your pasta? So tell us what you're doing right now. So now I'm just rolling the dough to the point that it is thin enough to sheet it with the pasta machine. So we're just kind of uh, flattening it out just a little bit. And actually, do you want to flatten my last ones out sure, for no me problem. and I'll get started yep. here? And so I'm going to turn the pasta machine on. And anybody who's ever made pasta before, you just always want to make sure that your rollers are set to the widest setting uh, initially. So you saw how much dough we had. It really starts to stretch out very quickly. I'm going to do all of the colors at once just to save myself time here. Come on through. And then I always use plenty of flour. You're lucky this is deep because I, I, I mean, normally I can project more, but you guys feel safe now. Just wait. Come up here. Come fondle the balls. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I just need to take this moment to get a little flour up. <laughs> Ooh, that was a that was a nice. You look you look beautiful now. It works as a face powder. So if you're up doing demos, you know, and you're getting a yeah. little bit shiny. So the blue one with the flowers uh, is the only one that's made differently in terms of a process than the others, um, because uh, you steep the flowers and essentially make like a blue tea. Yep. Uh, and so if you were to um, mix that blue tea with eggs, it would turn green. Okay. And so... All right. So always plenty of flour. So there really is... I mean, the flour is fun, but there's a legitimate reason for, like, always using a ton of it. You don't want mashups you, like that. Should I cut it's that fine. off? It's fine. fine. So the one great thing about pasta... Oh, shoot. We need our purple. Oh, yeah. I thought I already... I should put a more knife. Get a little bit of flour on What were you saying? Thing. The one great thing about pasta? Uh, is that it's very forgiving. If you put it through the machine and it tears a little bit or a little extra something gets on there, uh, 
you don't need to worry about it. You can just fold it back up, re-roll it. It's nothing like pie dough yeah. where you have to be very, very, um, you know, you baby it a lot. Pasta is uh, just incredibly, you know, you can't beat it up enough. And in fact, you want to beat it up a lot. You want to laminate it. What I'm doing right now, try folding it like that uh, because the process of lamination builds that strength in the pasta. That so by laminating it, you mean what you just did there, exactly. where you've taken yep. it and basically folded yep. it, turn it into an envelope. Okay. Uh, and that are we rolling the, these back out? We're going to go them? back through the machine. So if you want to flatten them just a teeny bit, just okay. so they'll go through, that would be helpful. So the the lamination though, and it just in general, like beating up pasta dough, uh, the purpose for that is to develop that tensile strength in it. So it has that really nice al dente quality that you look that most people really admire and appreciate in pasta. So how did you start making pasta and colorful pasta doughs? So I've been making pasta itself literally since I was four years old. My grandparents, I think um, I, I uh, went to visit them one summer and I think that they decided that I was old enough to be their rolling pin uh, labor so that they could start drinking um, Miller Lite at noon and just sit me at the kitchen table and force me to, to, to like roll and roll and roll with the pin. Uh, and I really took to it, like I loved it. And so they would just watch me, you know, this budding little chef be so excited about it. And so it's always been something I've been very passionate about. I've made pasta every day, or sorry, every week of my life with the exception of maybe a couple of travel weeks uh, since I was four. And, um, and so do you guys know in the audience, have you got, do you follow Linda on Instagram, Salty Seattle? Yep, you should check her out. It's um, mostly, Safe for work, mostly. Um, but I started of years. Yes. Now this is pretty much your full time career. It, it is, yeah. So when my son was five, uh, five years ago, he went through that picky phase that most kids go through, uh, and wouldn't eat a vegetable and could detect, you know, a vegetable in a smoothie. Like basically, he was eating refined white carbs, and that was it. Uh, and so I was at my wits end trying to figure out what to do, and I thought, well, we eat pasta all the time anyway. I can trick him with the pasta. Yep. And so when I first hit upon it and made like Minecraft pasta for him, but it had a bunch of like beets and spinach in it, I was like, this is a no-brainer. Like, why haven't I been doing this, you know, the entire time? Uh, and so the rest, uh, it turns out that it worked in our household, and it's a lesson that actually works is across valid across, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so now I'm getting this pasta thin enough that I'm going to actually start cutting this as soon as I stretch it out this length. I'm going to start cutting it into like pappardelle like strips. If you didn't want to go to the trouble to make the full rainbow, you could just make one of these colors, cut it into strips, send about 10 minutes, and you have fresh pasta for dinner. Uh, we are, we're going to be extra, and so we're... Going to taste the rainbow. So let's talk about actually making the dough. Um, is this a particular dough that needs to rest, or you just make it and then you can roll it right away? If you're rolling it through a pasta machine, you don't necessarily need to rest it because the pasta machine does do quite a bit of work. Uh, traditionally, you will rest pasta dough for 30 to 45 minutes before you sheet it because it uh, the gluten starts to soften and develop, and it makes it easier to work with. Okay. So I do like to rest it for, um, for about 30 minutes if I have the opportunity, uh, up to three days in the refrigerator. Right. So this particular dough we made yesterday. Yep. And I think uh, texturally speaking, it's going to be perfect. Okay. One more time there, and then we have them all stretched out. So now we are going to take out our handy dandy pasta bike, which is the, that one there. Yep. And cut this into strips. There are lots of different ways to cut pasta into strips. Uh, there is an attachment for the KitchenAid, um, but there's also just old school tools like this thing. This is called a pasta bike. It's very handy. I know it's an ooh factor, isn't it? Uh, for if you're if you're sort of spatially challenged like I am, it's a nice way to cut things into regimented squares and lines without having to worry about it. Ooh, but before we bust that out, I have to put this in Roy G. Biv because if it's not in rainbow order, my brain like goes crazy. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Blue's next. Green, yellow. When you're doing this like live on video too and you accidentally mix up the colors, OCD people will blow up your internet with like, what are you doing? Okay, 
So this is our base sheet. This is just a plain sheet of pasta dough. And then these are all of our colored sheets. Everyone here knows that they come from vegetables, herbs, and superfoods. Everyone in the back just joining us. Uh, there will be a quiz later. <laughs> okay, so back to our pasta bike, and we're going to cut some strips. And I don't know how I'm going to reach to cut those. I might have to jump up onto the table um, or just come around. Or you do it for me. That'll be good. So I'm just going to decide how big of strips that I want. This thing could also cut like fettuccine or big, wide, like lasagna size strips. But we're going to go with strips about like that. And go straight through just like that. I really won't be able to reach the purple. Are you ready? OK. I think I can reach the green. Can I reach the green? Is the green long enough? Let's just stretch that out. See, very forgiving. Is that a good angle? You got to get your social content in order, people. Okay. <laughs> How do we do? Let's see. That might be the limit of my ability. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to set you up for success over there, and then I'm going to hand this thing over there. Are you ready? Are you left handed or right handed? Yes. I knew I liked you. Okay. So that means you're gonna go, you're gonna wanna hold it in your left hand and go this way. Let me just cut off this yeah. end a little bit for you. Yep. So don't squeeze it together because that might change our yes. And then right there, and then see about how hard I'm pressing. Just like that. Straight across. Excellent. See, anybody can do it. I mean, you're multi talented and amazing, obviously. But let me just stretch my purple just a little bit more, too. Okay. All right, I'm letting you start that one. Wait, start at the, at the very end. Make sure you cut that. Perfect. And then right across just like that. And if it didn't cut all the way through, you can go always go back and fix it with this. Thank you so much for your help. What's your name? Swade. Can we give, can we give Swade a round of applause? Thank you. Excellent. And you guys, there's going to be a little bit more uh, opportunity for audience participation here shortly. I promise I won't embarrass you too much. Get your pinching fingers out, let's say. Uh, so I'm using water right now across this base sheet of pasta. So all that's in this base sheet is eggs and flour. Uh, and the reason I'm uh, laying the water down is that when I start putting these strips across it, I want them to adhere. So I just pick up a strip, start along the edge like that, and lay across. Do you want to grab the orange one for me? Yep, and sure. like we'll kind of like tag team sure, this. Sure, no problem. Perfect. And then let me. There any? Perfect. How, and then so okay. you go right up against it, even just overlay just a tiny bit, just to make sure that we don't have any base sheet peeking through. Perfect. Yes. Does that need an extra? If it I needs think an I extra, can grab this one. Got it? Okay. Yeah. And on down the line. So again, you do not need to go to this level if you don't want the the whole rainbow you can just um just lay even two colors if you wanted to just like alternate two colors it works really well for there's a big harry potter thing happening right now i feel like everybody wants harry potter colors for everything is it there's a new movie i think coming out or something um so you can just do two colors of stripes you can do all of them or again just make one color sorry i know purple's kind of unruly i'm gonna just use this give know. it a little cut yeah There we go. Perfect. There we go. I'm going to cut this. We're going to go back through. Yep. Yep. And how many times are we, are we take, we're going up the whole base layer? Yep. We're going to just make the rainbow right now so that we can taste the rainbow. Let's see. And red. I'm sorry. Orange. And this is a fun activity that you can do with a friend, with, with your kids. kids. Yeah. Yes, it's a great thing to do with kids. I feel like people who say they don't like to cook can actually get really into pasta making because there's almost like a, a crafty vibe to it. It's not just, and it's so forgiving. You know, you're not going to wreck it. Um, so... Obviously, we've followed you on Instagram for a long time. Um, we watch your stories. And you have how many chickens? 
I have 30 chickens and 10 ducks, and they provide the vast majority of the eggs that I have to use for my pasta. Uh, in the wintertime, they are freeloading, can I say bitches? <laughs> um, and they give me less, and it's very, very frustrating. So you... this time of year when I have to buy eggs, oh. A lot of my farmer friends are now like lighting in the chicken coop yes. to try and get them to produce. Right, exactly. Oops, we have a problem. That's okay. It's, we don't have a problem mm -hmm. that we don't have a solution for. Perfect. Um, yes, you can you can artificially light and they'll lay more. Uh -huh. But there's schools of thought about whether that's a you know a good thing to do because because um, they don't live as long if you do that and they produce okay. eggs for a shorter amount of time. Um, yeah, no, it's oh. I, oh. I, I saved one. Let's okay. see. Grab us. There's one last good red one. I think that one's still going to one? be pullable. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it is really interesting that all of this stuff, people are like, where do you get those crazy esoteric things? And it's like, well, the grocery store, the farmer's market, or the backyard. <laughs> this is so pretty. So it looks really cool right now, but wait till we're about to put this back through the pasta machine and it just starts coming together and it's so awesome. You might need, I think for that yeah. one, that was like, or yeah, we could, we could do that big strip there because uh, that can be our last one. Or I can cut it, I can thin out one side. Perfect, and we'll make green our end cap here. There you go, awesome. And so, we are ready to go back through the pasta machine. Is, does the overhead show this? Yes, it does. Okay, yeah. cool. So, what you're about to see next, I think, is the magic part. Because it does look really cool like this. So, all these scraps, I actually, if we have time, I like to save them just like this, wrap them up, and then re-roll them. And it makes this sort of marbled rainbow. And it's a really, like, unique effect that you could never duplicate. And it looks awesome. We'll put it under plastic in a minute, and we'll do that later. Um, so I'm just going to trim out my edges so I can go through the pasta machine nice and well. Make sure that all this is affixed. Maybe give me the pin just to um, roll it over nice and tight. Yep. yep. Give it an initial start here and make sure all of our strips are down. If there's any areas that stick or feel a little bit wet, I will reflower. Yeah, it's a little sticky down here. And then let's just make that a little skinnier. So it goes through the machine. Set yourself up for success. And now let's make the rainbow. So I'm going to go back to the widest setting on the pasta machine. Hopefully. And so when you say widest setting, that's with the largest number or the smallest? Uh, so I, I uh, try to avoid saying numbers because all pasta machines are different. Okay. Some start at zero. Some start at seven. Okay. So I'm the kitchen aid at Before you do it. Look at it. You yep. can see from above. You can so see the two rollers in don't, there. Don't trust the numbers. Trust your eyes to yep. see the widest setting. Because the thing is, if you put this through on too narrow of a setting right now, uh, it could pinch and tear it. And that was a little bit of work. We don't want to pinch and tear that. You no. know, we want to. So back to the widest setting and on with our pasta machine. Get everything ready. This is going to be really big and unruly in just a minute. So I will need help. Great. And that rainbow starts to emerge. So I'm going to go down one increment at a time on the machine. And you can see as it starts to flatten out, it's going to get bigger and bigger. So you Great. definitely, if you're alone, you just carefully go from one end to the other. But it's more you, fun exactly, to make this with yes. friends. There, there's, there's actually... I'm going to show you the trick that you do if you're alone. Okay. It's called the pasta loop party trick. So let's get this a little bit closer to us here. Okay. So I'm let's not going to help you this time. <laughs> so you go through about like that. And then you stop your machine for a minute. And then... You can adhere these two pieces together by using a little bit of water. Yes. Perfect. And we're just going to make basically a continuous loop. And let me see that straight cutter really quickly to make sure it's fully 
dialed in. You guys are actually probably the first group that has gotten the pasta loop party trick demo. I love doing this thing, but no one ever asks about what do you do when you're by yourself, and so I haven't done it. Okay. So see, it's just coming through. The first time that goes through, we want to be really careful to make sure that everything feeds properly. Did we get it? We got it. Yeah. There. Whew. Now, a little bit of flour on that since it was kind of hydrated. And now the both of us can actually kind of feed it through. You don't okay. need two people. You can do it on your own. But you have this continuous loop. Oh, is it stuck? Hmm. It's a little sticky right there still. Okay. Hold that and let me get a little bit of flour on that underside. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. Now we're going to go a little bit thinner. Oh. oh, okay. We're not doing it. We're not doing it, which is okay. We're just going to go back through with our regular sheet. Okay. So, get it nice and long and come right on through. So... So now we're going to take this down to about the third thinnest setting, which is an average setting. I'm going to go straight through. Now, the next time we put it in, great, awesome. Okay. Uh, you're going to put it in first. Okay. You got it? Okay. Yeah. It's and then you'll hold that direction. Yep, yep, you're great. Okay. Yep. And then pull over that way. And then could we have one audience volunteer to jump up and just help us feed this through one more time, please? Thank you. All right, here's what we're going to do. You're going to hold this in like this over your arms, just like that. That's great. Now we're going to walk that direction. I don't trust you to feed it. I know you look, you look very handy, but... I'm just going to go down one more increment on this. Are we at six? Yes. Okay. I'm going to trust you to feed it. Okay. Okay? So let's keep walking back this way. Unless you want me to. I'm happy to. I would hate to screw it up, but I think I got it. Okay. Wait. It's, it's not... Let me... Okay. Let's trade. You do it because I would rather it be on a flat instead of an angle, so I don't want to screw it up. Yep. And then... uh. We kind of almost need one more person. Oh, 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 oh. Technical difficulties. Okay. Oh yeah, you're right. It flipped just a little bit. Here, we can we can fix that. We're just gonna go like that. All right. So this is our last time through. It's gonna grow really big, you guys. So just hold on. I could actually use one more person over here if anybody wants to come and be supportive. Come fast, come fast. There we go. Perfect. Ah! Hold on, we're okay, we're okay. Actually, stop you for a second. What happened here? Let's go like that. Almost made it. Pasta explosion out the thing. Come on, come on. I'm always worried I'm going to get my hair in there. There. Okay. Now, slow that down a little bit. We'll just do our last little bit through. And so that you can put through yourself and hold both sides of it. So we have all this. So let's go out to the front of our counter and lay this down out there because we're going to actually have people help us pinch. So let's walk this way. And walk around, and we'll lay it out along here. Perfect. And then let's cut it here, like that. Excellent. OK. All right. So. I'm facing the wrong way. Hi. Sorry, guys. Uh, for a moment, I'll turn around, but I'll, I'll come back. 
So I'm going to cut these into rectangles, and then you guys are going to come up and get the opportunity to help me pinch them into the actual pasta shape. So let me start with this one here, and I'll use my pasta bike. I'm going to go straight across, at first with the straight edge. Great. And then I'm going to use the fluted cutter here. The fluted cutter makes like the butterfly edges, like the sides. So I'm just going to go up like this and make a few of the shapes. Now, and how far? They're about two inches? Yeah, they're about two inches. They're, they're, this is totally a personal preference. You can make a big farfalle, so like a farfalone, uh, or you can make little tiny farfalle, farfalina, uh, or you can make these that are just, they're about average. Um, so I'm going to make a bunch of these rectangles here, and I'm going to show you guys the pinch technique. Um, can the camera see? Yes. I think. Okay. And then you guys are going to come up and help us finish dinner. We have a delicious bolognese that's been simmering away. So I'm going to show you how to pinch right now. Let's see. Is that a good, can you guys see that? Um, can you I come can on move. the other side? Yep. Wait, that makes, that's right handed. Okay, well I'll do it right handed and it's not going to be easy, but we'll get through this. So you put your pointer finger in the middle, your thumb in the back middle, and your middle finger in the top middle, just like that. And then see, all in one fell swoop, I go pinch, just like that. I'm gonna show you guys one more time, and then you're gonna come up and try it yourselves. Pointer finger in the middle, thumb in the back middle, middle finger in the top middle, coming together and pinch, just like that. Okay, so come on up, you guys, and, um, and let's play. Let's pull that sheet over there, and then I can cut it over there, but I'll finish cutting this one really quickly for them. Let's see. Rachel, can you just push that? I, mean, I think we're done. So all this. those are ready down there. Wait, just uh, yeah. recut well, this we'll line. Do said. it on the, on the surface yeah, itself. Stick that. Oh, it's plugged in. Hold on. Just because people are going to come back here to roll this. She's going to roll this. And up. then, how did you do? No, it's not difficult. Do two or three and you'll get the hang of it. Yes, that's perfect. Who did this one? That one, that one's amazing. It's very empowering once you get it right. Okay, and now you guys are making the ones that we're actually going to, to, to taste with the bolognese. So just channel your inner pasta nonna. Have you guys ever made pasta before? No. Did you, I mean, when you woke up this morning, you had no idea that you'd be able to go home and say, I made pasta today. Anybody have any questions on that pinch technique? You guys all seem to be doing good job. I don't know who thought that was the middle of the piece of pasta, but whoever did that one needs a spanking from the principal. <laughs> How hard do you pinch it? How hard do you pinch it, the lady asks. <laughs> well, are you married? Hmm, maybe that's why. <laughs> so you guys, these normally would rest for about 30 minutes, uh, up to 24 hours in a single layer on a sheet pad in the refrigerator, but we want to get a chance to eat the fruits of our labor, so we are very shortly going to be boiling these as soon as we have enough to, uh, as soon as you guys, you know, do your worst, do your work. Right, exactly. Yeah, those look great. You're doing. You're 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 invested in. You're. I'm not. Like if you, if you if you pinch the crease too too much, I mean you would know right away because you would tear into it with your finger. So uh, you really, the more you can get that little pinch together, the better it's going to wind up. 
So you so. were saying with this dough, you actually form it back into a ball. And yep, roll rewrap it, out. it and then just pull it back through the pasta machine. And it's a different effect. It's more marbled looking. Okay. In fact, I have a picture of what it looks like. Yeah, I'd love to see here. that. And what's that? Um, you know, you don't need flour because you really want that pinch to hold. You stick, if you were sticking. I'll show you What's in a minute. I can look it up. It's okay. I'll look through it. It's called... God, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's in the scraps section. It's hard to use your own index. So we were talking earlier about... Um, Pasta water, and we have some water coming up to a boil over there. So we're almost ready to drop these in our pasta water then, which is great. Uh, so we will be making sure that our pasta water is prepped. So the ingredients in this dough are just the egg, the color ingredient, and flour, and that's it. And so it is missing one crucial component in order to make it delicious, and that component is salt. And uh, people often ask, how do you salt your pasta water? Uh, and so the answer that I like to tell people is uh, close your eyes. You're standing on the seashore. And a mermaid emerges from the water. And I don't care who you are, gay, straight, man, woman, this mermaid, this ethereal creature is coming toward you fully naked with her breasts protruding toward your now agape mouth. And she walks towards you. You part your lips a little bit. Her breast goes in. And you taste. You can't resist, but just take a small lick. And that is how you know how to salt your pasta water. It should be salty like a mermaid's nipple. <laughs> You'll never forget that, will you? So it really is. It's a life lesson. <laughs> uh, and what that translates to is you just take your diamond crystal kosher salt. And, you know, very delicately, very gently, because we're salting a mermaid after all. Just kind of throw a little bit in the water like so. Uh, and we can start boiling some of these so that you guys can taste them, because we have a nice amount pinched over there. We'll pinch a few more. We'll just Let's start see. collecting them on a sheet pan and then toss yeah, them in. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. It's very therapeutic, isn't it? Just the act of, yep. Yeah, it's kind of, I like, I try to challenge myself, you know, I always choose one that's like the perfect one. And how long do you cook your fresh pasta for? So because we just pinched these and they're very, very fresh, these will be done in about 30 seconds. People always ask how to get the colors to hold in the water. Well, there's two tips I have. One is to boil them relatively soon after making them, so within 30 minutes to a few hours. Uh, and then the other tip is to sheet them thin enough that you don't have to cook them for a long time. Because the more color that leaches out, uh, the less you're going to get of the nutrients that's in them also. Oops. I made a messed up one too. Don't feel bad. Do you have a best one? Oh, see, and then whenever I make the best one, I like I don't want to put it in the water. I we'll want to take keep a photo it. of that one. Yes. Yeah, put it aside. Yes. Oh, Okay, so our water is salted, so now all we need to do is, let's wait to put it in until we have our samples of the bolognese. Okay. Uh, and so that everybody can get a little taste. You guys are pretty close, right, Sarah? In fact, the samples are coming right out. Great. We get some more pasta. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to... Thank you, my dear. Here, I'll start. If you want to collect those, I'll start cooking the first round okay, of them. Perfect. They're right behind you. Okay. And then I'll do. Okay, perfect. Oh, 
Oh, actually, do you want to collect a few more so that we can put a few more? Thank you. You may hold it while you. I think that's a great idea. What do you think? One or two? Um, maybe two. Well, one's pretty. It looks so pretty with one, one. but. For them to really taste it. But Some of them that are tiny, maybe we'll do two. Like this yeah. one's kind of tiny. Yeah. Ah, we'll turn that over before we serve it. I think I have larger spoons underneath. Do you think we need them? Oh, probably not, but. They're hot. And then finally, we'll shave a little bit of fresh Parmigiano Reggiano over the top. So Bolognese, beautiful farfalle. How do those all look? Perfect. Let me just get the Parmesan. Uh, it's right there. Thanks, Sarah. Yep, I see. Thank Some you. are cuter than others. You guys excited to taste these? Let's see. Should I cook one more tray? Might as well, right? Okay. There's some nice, perfect ones. Sure. It's a little spoon. Tiny spoon. What a spoon? <laughs> so now that you have them in front of you, you guys really assess whether or not you think you can taste the color ingredient or not. You're welcome. Do you want me to... Re there you go. Spoon. Do you like one? Sure. It's a little spoon. That is a good one. That one's not. Sure. There. I think that looks great. Let's fluff. Sure. Oh, you have your own fork. So I wanted to mention, too, that um, we're super grateful to our sponsor for this booth, which is Muir Glen Organic Tomatoes. Um, if you haven't tried them, they're delicious. They really taste super fresh, go right from the field into the cans. Um, and for this particular recipe, we use their diced tomatoes. So if you're tasting the bolognese, uh, you'll notice that uh, it has a nice, you know, tomato-y flavor. They have a full line of products, and this is actually their new packaging, which is debuting this month at the grocery store. So it's changed a little bit. If you often buy yes. their tomatoes, yeah, it is this different. is a new package. So it's beautiful new packaging. It's yes. kind of got like a vintage vibe to it. Yeah, exactly. And actually, we um, help them with their booth downstairs. So you can also go there and check it out. And we're giving away cans of tomatoes. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. That's what an actual serving looks like. So what do you guys think? Can you taste the the color? Or does it just taste like pasta? Tastes like pasta, right? Good. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. I had so much fun pinching farfalle with you all. Thanks so much, Linda, for coming Absolutely. to the Phoebe's Kitchen. And um, we'll be back tomorrow yeah, for more fun. That'll be fun. So yeah, if you're here again, stop by. The schedule's over there. We'll be making pasta again tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.